Hello everyone and welcome to another Timeless video. So last time, I played against a deck that was pretty similar to this. This is probably not the exact one-to-one -one copy, but when I was playing my Death and Taxes deck, deck similar to this actually gave me the hardest time utilizing the new card Emporium Thopterus in this deck. And I've been meaning to try something like this, so I put together a list that looked similar to what I saw. And there you have it. So this is a deck based around a bunch of Thopters. You have the Emporium Thopterus, which is a new card from MKM Alchemy. This poops out an Ornithopter every single turn to your hand, but it only happens at an upkeep, so it can feel a little bit slow. But if you pair that up with things like Michiko Reign of Truth and having things like Metallic Rebuke, it's actually not so bad because you can utilize those Ornithopters that you've just gotten to your hand on that turn to improvise to the Metallic Rebuke or buff up your creatures using Michiko Reign of Truth. And besides that, we also play a bunch of other Thopters that can also benefit off of Emporium Thopterus. Of course, we play the four copies of default Ornithopters, but we also play two copies of Hope of Jurapure, and we have two copies of Barb Spike. Barb Spike is a bit expensive for what it does, but it does let you re-equip to the Ornithopter so that it gets a boost in damage if the Emporium Thopterus is not on the battlefield. And what that enables is we have four copies of Innovative Metatech that allows you to seek an online card with mana value two or less whenever one or more artifact creatures you control deal combat damage to a player. Ornithopter has zero power, so pair that up with Emporium Thopterus or a Bar Spike equip, you can proc Innovative Metatech's ability, and the Hope of Jurapure by itself has the ability to just deal one damage on its own. And if Emporium Thopterus does end up constantly dying, then you can always rely on your trusty old Retrofitter Foundry in creating a bunch of 4-4s using all the Thopters that you have. So having said that, we're going to be jumping into some Timeless Best of 1 to show you guys how the deck does. So let's hop on over. Um, it's a bit of a risky hand, isn't it? Let's try it out. Okay, so one thing's for sure, it's a brainstorm. Yeah, we definitely want to get rid of that. Just doing it on my turn. Alternatively, I could have uh, also just... Um... Nice. The power of Mishra's Bobble. The mirror. Watery Grave, that's a Demir. Breeding Pool. Breeding Pool. Um. Let's just get the Emporium Thopterist out. Sounds like a good idea. Oh! Okay, now I see what they're... what they're playing. This is Omnitel. I wasn't sure because they played an island and I saw a watery grave, thinking it was the mirror, and then I saw a breeding pool and I was confused. So if I Michiko and attack, I do lose my... S I can't rebuke. Oh, that sucks. Hmm, that sucks, doesn't it? So I have to go in soul. And then pass my turn. Next turn, we're going to be able to attack for a lot of damage. So that's good. Let's 
So there is that show and tell. I'm not sure... Do we have lethal? I don't know. Yes, we do. Okay, so we saw some power of the Emporium Thopterist here where it takes advantage of being able to create a bunch of zero mana artifacts and then we get to Metallic Rebuke a lot easier. That's kind of nice. Hmm, a bit of a similar looking hand, isn't it? Not a big fan of this, but... Sure, why not? Let's keep that. Plaza. A legend deck? Double Plaza. Lavinia. Well, that does make things very annoying, isn't it? Guess I could have um, kept up uh, mana for the Metallic Rebuke, but... Want to get the Esper Sentinel out as soon as possible. I mean, this is... What is this? Should I just... Run this out? Like... What are they gonna do, right? Let's just run this out. It's a 4-2 Ornithopter. Are you kidding me? Yeah! <laughs> That's what I thought. Oh, man. Well, this Emporium Thopterist sure loves showing up. That's always fun. So we're playing the Ornithopter first because we have a Emporium Thopterist, obviously. Oh, wow. Um... That's interesting, actually. I, I think it's... Maybe the Thopterist first. So, hmm, it's going to be a bolt, isn't it? A bolt, and they're going to try to kill the Thopterist. It's not? Uh, shocked? Very shocked, actually. No way. No way! <laughs> Wait, what? Hello? Why would you- Okay, hold up. Hold the phone here. Why would you call... Anything other than Ornithopter at this point? I mean, why make a 4-4 when I have 4-2 flyers, right? They have to use a Tribal Flame on a 1-1. One, one.
I think they have a counter spell. So, are we about to just win three games in a row just by having an Emporiothopterist on the battlefield? That kind of seems to be the case, right? If it's a bolt, that's fine, I guess. If they tap out here, they lose to Insul Artifact. That's kind of crazy. Man, this card keeps showing up. I feel like this is a bad hand, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to try this one. Interesting. Okay. Is it is this another Omnitel? Okay. Well, I'm scared of an Omnitel, so let's just do this. Is it... Is it five colors? A binding? Okay. Um, it's just... It's just Sue without Giganta, so that means they play... what? What do they play? I wonder if it's actually correct to Michiko. I mean, I'm doing so much damage right now, so... I was thinking maybe like this can get me a spell pierce. I'm actually kind of impressed with this deck. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, like, I'm actually pretty impressed with this deck. Okay, well... <laughs> this is definitely not a keepable hand. Yikes. Imagine if this was, though, like, if this was a dual land. Oh, man. This is a bit risky if to like a thought sees, but I don't know. I because they they don't have like um a companion, I thought it was going to be another a pelt collector. A freaking pelt collector. Okay. I'm officially scared. Oh god. Okay, that was... That could have been worse. Right? That could have been a lot worse. We don't block. We're gonna have to counter this. Um, 
Blue. Just not sure about shocking this uh, hallowed fountain in. I, I think it's blue. Okay, a bauble. Let's see what they're gonna draw. Oh god. <laughs> oh god. That's not good. Can I get another metallic rebuke? Play something like completely like play a collected company. I need a metallic rebuke now or an indestructible land. Dark Steel Citadel would be actually fire. Dark Steel Citadel is actually fire here. Okay, didn't get there. Um too many retrofitters. Too many retrofitters, so I'm gonna animate this. Into a 5-5. Five, five. And a pass. I think we have to take this damage. Uh, do I block? I think I just block this, honestly. I'm not... I don't want to take 5 damage here. That's really funny. Did we get another 4-4? Four, four? That's really nice. Looks like they have another... Like a... Oh, I... Ah, I just uh, did it backwards. I have to play the retrofitter first. But it actually, it might work out if they bolt us here. Because we had a spell pierce, but... Definitely seems like a bolt, right? Definitely seems like a bolt. I mean, they, unless they somehow trick me, it's just a bolt, right? That's what I thought. Oh, that is insane. Hmm, this is interesting. I really want to play this, but I don't have a blocker. I think we're just sitting duck until we draw land or something. Oh, come on. Really? I was so good at this game right now. Colin is so good at this game right now. I mean, what difference is going down to one or three? One or staying at three? You still die to both. Okay. Health Collector. Hmm. So they're gonna make the 4 4 unblockable. And then make a 4 4. That's not enough to survive this. So I actually have to play another. Oh my god, opponent, please. 
the top decks are insane right now. Yeah, we lost this one. I guess it did kind of matter, um, going down to two here. Target creature can't block this turn. Darn. We lost to a historic deck. Hmm. Quite the interesting hand here. We can... There's a lot of options with this one. Um, we cannot attack. Hold up a Metallic Rebuke. Okay, so this is Saltai Omnitel. So I'm going to try to go fast as possible. Also, I can sacrifice the hope of um, Drapir on turn 3, right? And they can't actually do it. But because I have a Metallic Rebuke, I'm actually not going to sacrifice it. I'm, go I'm going to be sacrificing at their uh, turn 4. So, this is a pretty fast hand, I must say. Oh, Utopia Sprawl. That kind of changes things. Interesting. Because now, they can hold up a Spell Pierce if they wanted to. Oh, that kind of sucks, actually. I really don't want to sacrifice it here. Yeah, I mean, if they have it, they have it. I just don't want to sacrifice it. Can I win next turn if I sacrifice it? Two, three, four. Can I still win? Uh, four, five, six, seven. I only have 10 damage. 11 damage. Oh, man. I didn't even think about it. Hmm. Black. Hmm, that's actually kind of annoying. I hate the fact that I have to do that. Oh, I won because... Oh, no, no, no. I win because I have double Ornithopter. Well, triple Ornithopter now. So I can go Michiko here. And I can just Metallic Rebuke if they um, try to counter our stuff. No. Well. Hopefully we draw land. Hopefully, hopefully. Yikes. Well, on the bright side, if Esper Sentinel ever untaps, we have a Metallic Rebuke up. So that's always nice. Nice. What is this? I really want to just play this out. I really just want to play this out. But I think we pass with the Metallic Rebuke up. So they probably have Binding now. Oh, it's I th I thought it was their end step. That's my bad. At least they're tapping out, right? At least they're tapping out, so now I can get some value with the innovative meta tech. Oh wow. 
Huh. They did that, huh? See what they're drawing. Return target artifact or creature card with mana value 3 or less from graveyard to the battlefield. Okay. Well, there's nothing in it. Let's just go with this. Oh, they play a Bowmaster. Okay, that's really bad. I didn't quite expect a Bowmaster from them. Because I saw this card and a Leyline Binding, you know? Well, that definitely took a turn, huh? Definitely took a turn. Definitely took a turn. Reprieve. Hmm. Okay, now... So let's get out. Oh, finally we see an Ornithopter start. Oh my god, with the Retrofitter? And a Metallic Rebuke? This is definitely a winning hand if I if I had gone first. But we are dealing with the Giganta deck, which means um, this could be a Domain. Okay, it's not a domain, at least. Okay, that's a one too many retrofitters. We don't need this many retrofitters. Do not need this many retrofitters. Oh yeah, it, it is a domain deck. It is a domain deck. Okay. I do actually wonder if I should actually even sacrifice this because I'm not attacking with this card next turn, right? Yeah, I'm not attacking next turn. Hmm. I really want to play this Emporium Thopterus, but... I also want to just like, I want to be able to leave up a mana for Metallic Rebuke. Is it not Jitsu? Okay, apparently it's not Zoo. Oh, that's kind of annoying. Ragavan gets a value? Kinda sucks because now Ragavan gets a value. I didn't even think about that. This is a definite definite misplay by me. Definite misplay. Misplayed a whole lot there. What? It plays Tribal Flame. Can't you just take a land? What is this? So it's a zoo deck? But that plays Mink Gambu. It's so strange. Ok, 
Okay. It's a bit annoying. The opponent passes. That's a good sign. That's a very, very good sign. I love that. That opponent passed. Well, we might actually just win here if they don't have anything. That's good. That's a lot of retrofitters. So it's either a 4-4 on the ground. Uh, they're looking for a final card to kill me with. I can still kill them at the moment. That's a uh, lethal damage right now. Okay, nice. That was a kind of a scary game, honestly. That's pretty nice. Hoping the Drapure lives. Don't do it. Nice. Well, that kind of changes things, doesn't it? Um, Deathrite Shaman. Deathrite Shaman. Hmm, what to do? I mean, there's no lands in the graveyard, so... Hmm... I'm gonna go with the uh, Metatech. Might bite the bullet if they actually... has a fetch land here. <laughs> But snow cover swamp. Is it Jund? Maybe it's just Jund. Maybe they also have a removal for hope. Okay, land was actually such a fantastic draw, it was crazy. Portable Hole doing a lot of work in this format. Kills Death Ray Shaman. Oh, they have a Fatal Push, okay. That kind of sucks.
Well, hopefully then the Emporium Thopterus lives. Four colors? Four colors. Oh, that's really nice. I was thinking about setting up Barb's, uh, Barb Spike so that the meta tech can get there next turn. But, I mean, they just use so many removal spells that... Okay, never mind. So lucky. Oh, so lucky. Infinite removals. Infinite. Need we need to somehow get rid of that jar soul. That's actually humongous. Such a humongous draw. If it's Minsk, uh, I don't know if I can beat a Minsk. Oh, wow. Look at their curve. The sun is warm. Look at their the curve, man. Now we are large and in charge. Magic. <laughs> we have muscle. Jesus. I take eight. Yeah, their 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 hand was just absurd, right? Their hand was insane. I, I mean, like to be fair, my hand was also like pretty insane, but ears. I mean, we are probably dead if they also have a lightning bolt here. Don't tell me you have another Minx Gembu. Insane. So that's what it takes to beat us. Easy to wallop. Here's where it go big or actually go big. Just go big. Rebel spell every single turn into Jar Soul into a double Minx Gembu. Okay, I see a potential here. I see a potential. Let's see what they got. Utopia Sprawl, so I'm gonna guess this is an Omnitel. So we we so these portable holes are absolutely dead, unfortunately. Super unfortunate actually. Um, and I might just install Artifact turn 2. Wait, what? Oh, no. Actually, the worst outcome. Well, I don't know what they could have, so... This is what I'm gonna do. Oh man, three dead cards. Basically, we started this game with five playable cards. Oh, 
Yikes. Yeah, I think we're dead. Uh, unless we get um, exactly... I don't know. A counter spell. So we need to draw like a spell pierce here, basically. Let's scare them, thinking we might have something. Yeah, we have a counter spell. Please don't do it. Please. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Thank the Lord. Okay, now play your Utopia Sprawl on your Overgrown Tomb. Nice. 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 At least my opponent uh, safely played around our uh, seemingly non-existent metallic rebuke. So that's uh, that's always nice. Very nice. Okay, uh, quick. Another one hour session. 10 and 4. Not bad, not bad. Oh, right, so... We played exactly 14 games. We went 10 and 4 with this deck. It does seem like our worst matchup is Jund. Definitely our worst matchup seems like it's Jund, but I'm not 100% because I've only played against one Jund so far in the 14 games, so... Like, a very, very diverse, um, diverse ladder at the moment. So many different decks, but we have actually played against quite a bit of show and tell, and this deck does seem like it's very, very well positioned versus show and tell because... The damage just kind of comes out of nowhere. Like, as you can see here, like, opponent was well above, like, you know, 10 life. And out of nowhere, Michiko comes down and opponent's just kind of obliterated. So that plus the ability to keep up a counter spell, such as, like, Metallic Rebuke and Spell Pierce. I think this deck is very, very good against uh, Omnitel because of how fast this deck can actually kill your opponent. Um, another thing to mention is this deck does seem very, very weak to Orcish Bowmasters. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. That's one of the reasons why I say this is probably not a very good matchup going into a Jund. Um, especially the fact that we are playing a Spell Pierce instead of the third and fourth copy of Metallic Rebuke. We can't count... If, we, if you have Spell Pierce in your hand, you can't counter the Orcish Bowmasters. And two last things to mention. Emporium Thopterist. Very very scary card in this deck last time i played this in ninja it was not a scary card but in this particular deck this seems incredible um it enables our ornithopters into being able to actually deal damage which means innovative meta tech is also really nice with it and you also have barbed spike that can also put a plus one attack on the ornithopter as well so that you can make use of the innovative meta tech. I think these two are pretty nice together. Um, and I did actually enjoy two copies of Hope of Jira Pure. Um, there was a game where I won because letting me sacrifice this card, preventing my opponent from casting the show and tell on our on their turn, and then we were able to kill my opponent with the Michiko. So that's also pretty nice as well, but it definitely does seem like the Mishra's Bubble and Esper Sentinels are the suspects in an Orcish Bowmaster format. So you do have to kind of bank on your flyers in getting through with the innovative Metatech up. And then the Metatech can hopefully get you a portable hole into your hand and getting rid of the Orcish Bowmaster. So also you probably want to keep the two spell pierces instead of going up to four, full, uh, full four copies of Metallic Rebuke. Because you want to spell pierce on turn one versus like necropone stacks, things like that. And also innovative meta tech can only seek a non card with mana value two or less. So if you really need a counter spell at that point, get it, grabbing a spell, um, potentially being able to grab a spell pierce can come in clutch as well. So, so having said that, that is going to be it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed the video so far. And if you did, as always, leave a like, comment below, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.